just in case you couldn't get enough of the little pink puffball, we're back for another one in the exact same game. Hey guys, this is Bill with NSPC3. Today we are tackling Kirby's Adventure once again for the second time, and this is card number 75 in the collection. So as you already know very well by this time, if you've been following the channel this long into its existence, there are four separate games with two separate challenges in this collection. We've already knocked out two of them, being Mario 3 and Zelda 1. Today, with this video, we will be completely knocking out Kirby's Adventure, leaving only Black Bass Fishing on the Game Boy, and trust me, it will be getting its time in the spotlight very, very soon. Anyway, until that day comes, let's go ahead and talk about what makes this challenge different and more difficult, certainly. You thought 100% run through was tough enough? Oh, trust me, they found a way to make this one more difficult, and you're gonna see. Let's flip it over. Okay, so what are they trying to put us through this time? Well, let's take a look. Challenge states, can you make it to Grape Garden, meaning level 4, without, on pro, using any normal attacks? Alright, now, I know what you're thinking. Great, that makes the game even easier. I use nothing but special attacks. What could go wrong? Oh, trust me, quite a bit can go wrong. In some respects, yes, the game is made easier, but in other respects, the game is made much harder. Believe it or not, a lot of these sub-bosses and even the stage bosses become even more difficult by the fact that you can't suck in and shoot back those stars. Many of the special abilities require you to get in close, putting you in harm's way, and it absolutely does make the game more difficult in many respects. Quite a few deaths, quite a lot of frustration, quite a lot of resets, but I'm very happy to say I did get this done, and I'm very happy to show you how I did it. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the final challenge for Kirby's Adventure on the NES. Here we go! Okay, here we go. We're off and running with a run all the way to level 4 Grape Garden with only special attacks, no normal moves. Now, before we jump into you know the strategies for particular stages and levels here, let's get out of the way what exactly constitutes a normal attack here, because there is some ambiguity here, and I want to be very clear on that before we go forward into the more difficult stages here. So a normal attack, we're going to put all this stuff up on screen here. Normal attacks include anything like blowing puffs of air. So obviously you know when Kirby goes up in the air and flies like that, and he blows out a puff of air when he comes back down. If that puff of air hits an enemy, regardless of whether or not it kills them, it counts as a normal attack and your run is automatically over. So if you're going to fly, make sure that you blow the air out before you get down and make sure it's done in a safe manner where it's not going to hit the enemy here. So that's the first most obvious thing. The second thing I would point out is sliding. It doesn't matter whether you slide while you're holding a special attack or you're not. Any kind of a slide that hits an enemy, whether it kills them or it doesn't, is a normal attack. So you can't do sliding either. And the last major thing I want to point out with normal attacks is inhaling the enemies. If you are going to inhale an enemy, it can only be for the purpose of absorbing their special ability. So, what do I mean by that? You're going to see a lot of generic enemies here that don't give you any specials. So if we're talking the generic enemies, the Meta Knights that you will encounter two different times throughout the course of the battle here, you cannot suck in those enemies here because if they don't give the abilities it counts as a normal attack so inhaling can only be done with that in mind here okay so now that we've gotten the information for normal attacks out of the way let's start focusing on stage specific and boss specific stuff here so we're coming up on the first sub boss here this is the bomb man equivalent basically so the thing i like to use here is the cutter attack you're welcome to use whatever you want but the thing here obviously is you do not want to lose your special ability because if you lose it during a sub-boss battle, there is almost always no way to get a special ability back and short of killing him. So, do whatever you can to hurt the enemy without losing your special ability because you don't want to have to start over in the middle of a sub-boss battle. It's happened quite a few times to me, so keep that in mind. You have to use, in my opinion, the projectile abilities are the ones that are best to use. So these are things like the cutter, fire is good, I think there's one other one out there, the laser one is probably my personal favorite for this objective in this challenge here. So anytime you can get the laser ability, please, please jump all over that. It will make your life much, much easier for this challenge. So we got through the first sub boss here using that ability and that wasn't too rough. The bomb man is probably the easiest one of all the sub bosses here, provided you know where he's going to jump. So that's really it for that. We're through stage 1-2, we got two more to go, and then we got the boss with the Wispy Woods trees, which is a joke and a half. 
So now we move into level 1-3, and this is the first point of this run where you really have to consider specific abilities to use. Now, is it required? No, but this is certainly going to make your life a little bit easier in the water sections. So, as you probably know, when you're in the water, your special abilities are severely limited in that you can only use melee weapons. So we're talking about the sword, the parasol, that kind of thing. And there will come a section here where you will be going underwater. So, take advantage of that, knowing that knowledge. You're going to have to find an enemy with the sword ability here, and there were certainly one or two that we passed on the way. So if you're at this point in the level and you don't have the sword, it might be beneficial to take a death or consider just going back, restarting, and getting the sword. Now, it's going to come up right about here, so you're going to come down here, you're going to drop into the water after going to the left, down this hole here. All you got to do is go down and around. So technically I didn't even need it, but if you don't have confidence in yourself, it could be very beneficial to just get the sword ability right there. So at this point, we just have to wait for this frog, generic looking enemy to get out of the way. Obviously we can't kill it with a puff of air, so we're kind of at the mercy right now. And we're waiting, waiting, waiting. Yeah, finally. Oh, one more thing I should definitely mention here, because I know this is going to come up in the questions and comments. If you happen to, like right there, if you happen to hit an enemy, just like run into them, the enemies will oftentimes just explode and die on their own. That does not constitute a normal attack, because you're not really attacking them, you're just running into them, you're taking a hit. That is just incidental contact, it's not considered a hit. Now, I don't advise you doing that with every single enemy in the game, that's pretty stupid, because you're putting yourself at risk of dying. But to be very clear, running into an enemy and making them explode as incidental contact does not count as a normal attack. It's just getting hit. All right, now I believe that's all of the regular stuff out of the way. We can focus on the regular bosses and stages here. So we get through the first or the second major sub boss. That wasn't too tough. And really, this is just straight on to the end here. This is not that difficult here. With the freezing ability, it makes the rest of the stage a complete joke and a breeze. So there really isn't too much to see here, provided you take the freeze ability all the way to the end. So I'm just going to skip right ahead to the end of this level here. Alright, we approach the end of the first level, and of course we have the Wispy Woods boss, and honestly, it does not matter which ability you bring for the most part, just get up right close to him and absolutely murder and destroy him. Show no mercy, there is no reason you shouldn't be able to beat this boss without taking a single hit. It is that simple. I think anyone who has ever played Kirby, whether it be on the NES or the Game Boy, knows this to be a fact. There really is no need for strategy here, but thus it is part of the video, so it is what it is. All right, moving forward to Ice Cream Island. This is going to have a particularly tricky section. In fact, there's a couple of tricky ones. And the first one is gonna come up, not here, but we'll show you anyway. I always like to run underneath those coconuts. Just fly over everything. And I gotta say, the first tricky section is gonna be in 2-3, where you have the Meta Knights. That is gonna be the gatekeeper, so to speak. Although there is a sub boss as well you'll be taking on, though I don't consider that to be too bad. And you'll see what I mean as we get up upon it. Really, there isn't a whole lot to speak about here in this first level. It's nothing you haven't seen in the 100% run through. So forgive me, but we're just gonna skip right ahead to the first tricky section. Okay, moving forward here, coming out of the Warp Star, we're going to have our next sub-boss, and before you go on fighting him, I strongly encourage you to suck up this fire enemy here. Yes, there's many different abilities that you could use, but if you're hurting for one right now, get the fire enemy right here. Go up close to it, hit it as often as you can, but be aware of its patterns, obviously. Don't get run over, or you're going to have to suck the star back in. And remember, if you do lose the star, you're probably going to have to restart, because to my knowledge, sucking in the tires that it spews out doesn't give you an ability, unless I'm mistaken. You have to shoot stars back at it, which does constitute a normal attack and will invalidate the challenge. So just be aware of that. Once you manage to take down the boss, which is not too difficult with the fire or some projectile ability, you can continue onward here. Be aware of the tire right there. Just continue to fly up and over pretty much everything here on the way to the end of the stage. So that is probably the trickiest section remaining. 
until you get to the very end, and then you'll have to worry about the next hiccup, which is gonna be the Meta Knights coming in 2-3. So that's gonna do it for this one. Here is your chance to get a Beam ability, which I highly recommend, and I'll tell you why. You're gonna use Beam to get UFO. So this is your last chance right here to get Beam. Suck it up if you need to, move on forward, and then we'll show you how this works. Trust me, you do want the UFO for taking on the Meta Knights here. It can be done otherwise, but it is extremely difficult without it. So we picked up the beam ability that completes that stage right there. Now we're going to move into, in my opinion, the toughest stage of level two here, all because of the damned Meta Knights. And by the way, even if you and when you get the UFO, it's no guarantee that you're going to get to the boss of the Meta Knights rather with the UFO. So what am I talking about? Here we go. So we go down here again, make sure you have the beam or some sort of ability that will allow you to hit this block over here and break through. So we do that. Break it right there, bomb through, get rid of the beam, go in and suck up the UFO enemy as quick as you can because sometimes it will fly away. And if the UFO disappears on this screen, it does not respawn even if you leave and go back in there. It is gone forever. So we have the UFO, now we have to get there while keeping the ability to fight the Meta Knights. So take out these enemies as quickly and painlessly and safely as you can. By the way, in case you don't know how the UFO ability works, tapping the button really quickly does the beam ability, Holding in the shot button will give you the star attack. So there's definitely a reason to do one or the other. Right about here, the beam attack is good. Keep using that beam attack. Keep mashing the button. Get rid of these generic enemies. And then move on in. And we're going to fight the first version of the Meta Knights here. Now, how do you get rid of them? The first thing I recommend doing is flying up top and getting rid of these enemies with the star attack. So get rid of them as quick as you can. You can save the bottom tier for last if necessary. But those ones that throw the tridents are absolutely the most menacing and annoying. So take them out quickly. Be very careful of those ones with the axes because they will throw cutters that can go up and boomerang and accidentally hit you and take you out. You don't want to risk losing the UFO right now because, again, if you lose it, you're screwed. There is no way to get another ability if you lose it here. So take out the final Meta Knights here with the UFO. Pretty simple with the star attack in tow. Pretty simple. And that's going to do it for this stage. So we go right to the end. That completes this level. And that's probably the toughest portion of level two that you're going to see for quite a while. So we're going to go ahead and fast forward onto the next portion. By the way, as I'm fast forwarding here, make it a point to pick up a laser power up, whether it's there at the museum or somewhere else at a previous level. You will want that for the next sub boss coming up, which is the one that gives you the mic ability. Yes, that's a very critical, crucial one coming up. You can also pick up one of these abilities here, Stone or Parasol, but I strongly encourage you to get Laser because you can hit this enemy from far away, as you can obviously tell. He has those music notes that he'll throw away at and around at you, so hitting him from a distance, although it will take a little bit longer, it is certainly a lot safer than getting in close with a melee weapon, so that takes care of that ability. You can suck it up if you want to, or you can keep the laser. It's really up to you. I'm choosing to take the mic because, let's face it, the mic is just awesome. It destroys everything on screen, and you get three uses out of it. So do what you will. With this screen here, obviously, if you've played through the 100% playthrough, you know that all you got to do is get down there, blast it one time, takes out all six of them, and then do what you got to do with the rest of these here. Now, you could take the laser back. That wouldn't be a bad choice. I'm choosing to keep the mic. And I'm going to destroy the couple enemies here. Man, there's a lot of laser enemy options here. you think it would be a clue, right? Well, I'm choosing to keep Mike just because of how awesome it is, but it really is up to you. So, continue on forward. Laser or Mike or some other ability, it really does not matter. As for the remainder of the stage itself, it's nothing you can't handle. Just continue to fly up and over everything here. Lots of generic, stereotypical enemies here. There's a chance to get a spark. Nothing too crazy or complicated. Just take yourself all the way to the end. And that's it for 2.4. Let's go ahead and move on to the next part of the game. So as we speed through this portion of the game, basically you're just flying over every single enemy here. It's nothing you can't handle. Just be careful not to puff out the air and hit the enemies by accident. Fly, 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 bird's eye view over everything, not too complicated. Now this section I do want to talk about here. So in order to get up there, you need to destroy these blocks. There's a couple ways you can do it. You can do it with a sword, you can do it with the parasol umbrella, or you can destroy it with the puffs of air. Now I know what you're thinking. Puffs of air are normal attacks, right? Well, yes and no. When they're being used to kill an enemy, that's one thing. But when you're doing it to destroy the blocks, which is sometimes necessary in order to advance in the game, that's completely different here. And oh, by the way, I had the sword anyway, so if I really wanted to, and if you want to nitpick me here, I had the option to use the sword. 
but the normal attacks are only considered normal attacks against actual enemies here, not against obstacles. So, take that for what you will. I don't consider the challenge invalidated because it had to be done to advance the game here. So we continue on here. That's really all I wanted to say with this particular level. That's the only complicated section, if you want to call it that. And now we move on to the boss of world number two here. This is the artist that paints portraits and tries to kill you. Now, in order to take out this particular boss, there's a number of ways you can do it. As you may know from paying attention in the 100% run through, every time this boss paints a portrait, it will give you an option to suck in the portrait and give you a special ability. Now you could certainly do that, but by doing that, you're putting yourself at risk to get hit by the boss. So what I recommend doing is coming into this boss fight with the laser upgrade, preferably not getting hit like I just did, and then blasting the boss from far away where they cannot hit you. So find a free open spot where you're safe, or at least reasonably safe, and then just keep pelting the boss with lasers. If it's possible, get yourself into a position where the projectiles and the portraits can't hit you, and then just keep on blasting away. Yes, it's going to take a little bit of time this way because the laser doesn't do a lot of damage, unfortunately, but it's by far the safest option. And in order to get this challenge done, sometimes it's better to be safer than faster. So we have about almost half of the boss's health left and we're pelting away with all kinds of lasers. Now right there is the mic upgrade. If you manage to suck in the microphone, you can basically destroy the boss with only a couple of shots of the mic. I had the option to do that, but I'm feeling like just using the laser and finishing her off. So whatever, not a big deal. A couple more shots should do it. Bam, gone. And that's it for level two. We've only got one more to go, the butter building before we get to the end and complete this challenge here. And I gotta say that the butter building is probably the trickiest level in this challenge leading up to Grape Garden, and for good reason. It's the third level in the game. It should be harder and more difficult. So let's continue on here and let's see if we have anything worth discussing. And right now I can tell you there's not. You're gonna be going into the castle and obviously you're gonna be going round and around and around certain levels where you have to traverse up. So, you know, play, play, play. It's nothing you haven't seen before. It's everything you're already familiar with. So really, we're just going to continue on. We're here. Here we have this boss again. If you've got the laser already, just take it out the way you did the first time in level two and you'll have it gone in a matter of mere seconds. If you want to suck in the mic attack like I tend to do, go ahead. If not, you can skip it. The laser works just fine. That's really all I have to say. The rest of this is very, very simplistic. There's another chance to suck in a laser if you don't have it. The laser is the key to completing this challenge and this portion of the game, honestly. If you can get it, you're in very good hands here. Now, you don't have to do this. Remember, you're not required to get 100% up to Grape Garden. I'm choosing to do it here just because I'm familiar with it and it's just what I like to do. You don't have to do it this way. And that's really all I've got to say, so we're going to fast forward on to the next tricky section. Okay, we're coming up upon our next sub-boss here, that being the Beetle, and right now we have the Laser, which is a great option, or you could opt right there to suck in the Ice ability. Either way works very well. I prefer, as always, to go with the Laser option. I love the projectile-based attacks against these sub-bosses here, some of which will shoot out projectiles, which we're about to see very soon. Unfortunately, we took a hit, but it's not a big deal. We got our star and ability back, so boom, gone. And you can always suck in the beetle. I highly do not recommend it because the throw and the backdrop, while they are very, very good against regular enemies, they certainly won't work against bosses or sub-bosses. So they are more niche than anything else. So that takes care of 3-2. Now we're going to move into level 3-3. And with this particular level, for the most part, it's pretty straightforward. You have a very simple section of ladders up and down, enemies, nothing you can't handle. This section is not too tricky, so just go snake yourself around. You can take in the cutter if you want. The cutter's not a bad option to have some of these enemies that are tucked around corners. I'm going to keep my laser just because. We're going to continue to go around these towers here. You're going to have a lot of generic enemies that don't give any abilities, so don't worry. Now that one will give the high jump, so if you want an option to get the high jump ability, please knock yourself out. It's not really necessary, but you'll find that maybe later that could prove necessary, maybe against the third world boss, who knows. If not, just continue on upwards here, climb this tower as quick as you can. Don't go in any of the doors unless you need health, then it may be beneficial to go into one of these. If not, as I said, continue to kill the enemies, go in the top left one up here before a brick wall. 
take out these blocks here with either your sucking ability or your laser, whatever gets the job done, go through, and that's the end of this stage. So again, you know it if you've already seen it in the 100% walkthrough, and that's gonna take care of this particular level. Now I have news for you, the Meta Knights are coming up once again, and if you do not have the laser ability, I strongly encourage you to pick it up right now, whether you go to a museum here, previously in World 1 or 2, or you go to a previous stage and get it. Trust me, you're going to want some projectile-based ability, maybe even beam would be good, I don't know. Find something that will allow you to take out the Meta Knights as quickly and painlessly as possible. Heck, maybe even go back and get the UFO if you want to trouble yourself to go back all that way. But here we go with the Meta Knights once again. Do what you have to do. The laser is going to be the safest option, although it, of course, will be the slowest option. So take out the ones that you have right here. These are the cutter enemies. You can very well, very easily get up on the platforms right here. You can jump yourself off. The cutters shouldn't hit you, even if you're standing on that pink platform. So don't worry too much about that. Just get rid of these enemies safely. That's probably the most dangerous one right there. And that's the most dangerous one you're going to have to worry about throughout the entirety of the fight. Be very, very careful with that. As you can see, most of these Meta Knights can be taken out very, very easily. Now, right here, when you've got two of them on the bottom, this becomes excruciatingly annoying because you have a cutter down there and then you have a mace tosser down below. This becomes very difficult. So basically, do what I'm doing down here. Get down and destroy the mace enemy as quick as you can before the cutter has a chance to throw his blade out there. So here we go. We're going to go down, probably finish off the mace once he gets one final cycle in here because the cutter just went. All right, he's gone. Now we just have to get rid of the cutter a couple of times and I believe that should be it. Yes, every tier is gone with the exception of this one. So that tells me he's going to come out one more time. Oh, look at this. We have a mace thrower on the very top where nobody can hit him, even us. All you got to do is jump. Heck, even if you're jumping, he still probably can't hit you because you're going to be very safe for the most part. And that takes care of the Meta Knights. So now we just have a couple more sections of generic stereotypical enemies here. So when it's safe, jump up, get rid of the enemies. Very, very simple. Not too complicated. And you're going to continue. So you have the air pocket chamber. Take it all the way up. Even if you get hit, not a big deal. Just go all the way up. Get your health refilled. And that's the end of the stage. Very, very simple once you get past the Meta Knights. Let's fast forward to the next section. Okay, we come upon our next sub-boss. This, of course, is the Hammer Brother, and this one is not too difficult. You get here just by flying over all the enemies in the previous section, so not too tricky. With this case, I have the Freeze ability, and there are probably better options to have because this one requires you to get up close unless you want to freeze his projectiles, which in this case you can. You can freeze the footballs and throw them right back in his face, so in this case it worked out. If you want to use a different ability, like the laser or fire or something else you think is better, by all means have at it. There are many, many safe ways to take this boss down. So do what you will. We've got one final hit. There he goes. You can suck up the hammer if you want to. I tend not to do that in this particular playthrough because melee attacks tend not to be good against bosses especially. And you're going to see that we're almost at the boss of World 3, by the way. That takes care of that one. That one, again, very, very simple. Just another sub-boss battle, and this is the final stage before the final boss of this challenge here. So, we have an option to suck up the laser. You certainly can, and by the way, before you enter and you face the final boss of this challenge, you are going to want to have that laser upgrade, so just remember that. By the way, you're going to have quite a few bomb droppers here, so be careful. You probably will take a hit or two if you don't know what's coming up here, so be very, very cautious. Get the health refills and just take this section nice and slow. There's no time limit. Remember, this is a very nice thing about this game and this challenge. No timer, so be very, very cautious, strategic. Think about what you want to do. Okay, we're going to be climbing up this tower section here. Watch out for the cannons. You have another little health refill, so get it when it's safe. Watch out for the sword striker. You should be able to get that health power up no problem. Just wait for him to strike. Go down, get it, and continue your ascent up to the top through the doorway. Be careful of this cannon. Those cannons can be very annoying if you do not remember they fire three shots. You have one more revolving tower section to go through, and then we're pretty close to the end of this level, so we'll just go ahead and wait it and ride it out. Having the freeze ability is very nice, as always, one of my favorite abilities and attacks. We're pretty much at the end here, so just go all the way up. Don't worry about that block section right there. This is the final enemy right here, so wait until it's safe, drop down, dispatch of it with an ability. And we're pretty close to the end. We're in a dark section. Now, if you think back to the 100% playthrough, 
there is a hidden door and a hidden switch here. Obviously, in this playthrough, we don't care. You can fly over just about everything and get right to the exit. So, let's do that. Fly over everything. There's the doorway. We're gonna go all the way up top. This is the last ugly section to worry about here. Just a little bridge that goes up and down, up and down. You're gonna have some exploding enemies here, and they can be kind of annoying and scary if you don't know how to deal with them here. So, just be aware of that. Climb very cautiously, and there's the exit for World 3-6. So get up there safely, take out the enemies, and we are done! We have completed every single stage in this challenge with the exception of the World 3 boss. Now, the World 3 boss obviously is the toughest of all the bosses we've faced thus far, but if you go in there with the appropriate ability, it's a complete joke for the most part, and we're certainly going to make sure that we have the right ability. Now think back, what have we been saying all this time in terms of abilities? What's the best one to take against some of these bosses? That's right, we're going with a laser. So, go ahead, inhale your laser, backtrack a little bit if you need to, go to a previous stage, museum, whatever you gotta do, get that laser upgrade, then go forward to the final boss of World 3 Butter Building, and let's take on Mr. Sun and Mr. Moon here, and let's see how quickly we can get rid of them and hopefully complete this challenge without slipping up with a normal attack. All right, now, as you probably remember, the moon's gonna go up. You can't hit the moon, but you can hit the sun. So get in a safe position on the other end of the screen and fire away as many times as you possibly can. You might even be able to kill the sun if you're lucky. Just watch out for the stars. And I think we do get it. Oh, we actually lost our ability right there. By the way, if you lose your ability, you're screwed. You can't do it unless you restart the <laughs> take a death. So be very cautious there. All right, now the moon is down here. We have to take out the moon. The sun is gone, thankfully. It's the same strategy with the moon. Just keep firing from full screen. When he jumps up and begins the rush, obviously jump. Very, very simple. Fire, 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 gone, gone. And that's it. We have just completed up through Great Garden with no normals, all specials. That's gonna completely knock Kirby's Adventure off the challenge list, leaving only Black Bass Fishing as the dual remaining game challenge here. We will get to it eventually. As for what's coming up, I got a couple Game Boy games, and eventually Lemmings will be hit as well. But thank you guys for tuning in. As always, take care. We'll see you in the next one.